Welcome to St Mary's Beverley. It is good to be with you this morning. And today we're thinking a little bit about Jesus' teaching and we'll be thinking about how it applies to our lives. But as we gather, we begin with our opening prayer. Father God, we thank you that you love us so much, that Jesus laid down his life for us, Fill us with your Holy Spirit, so that we may love others as you love us. Speak to us today, dear Lord, and help us listen and hear your voice. Amen. So we come to a moment of stillness and confession. Shall we pray? Lord God, we recognise that too often we've wandered off onto the wrong path. For the times when we failed to care for the world that you've given us. For the times when we failed to care for those people around us. For the times we failed to speak out for justice and for mercy. 
for the times when our unconscious bias has affected our behaviour towards those of a different culture or background, race or creed. For the times when we failed to see the consequences of our actions. When we've not been able to join up the dots and see how the things that we do affect those much further afield. For those who work in poverty or sweatshops. For those who are used for the benefit of the rich. Lord God, we pray that we might know that each of us is called by your name. May we offer the kind of protection and care that you bring. In Jesus' name, Amen. And so may Almighty God forgive us, restore us, renew us as he walks alongside us. Amen. The reading is taken from Acts, chapter 4, verses 5 to 12. The next day the rulers, the elders and the teachers of the law met in Jerusalem. Annas the high priest was there and so were Caiaphas, John, Alexander and others of the high priest's family. They had Peter and John brought before them and began to question them. By what power or what name did you do this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers and elders of the people, if we are being called to account today for an act of kindness show to a man who was lame and are being asked how he was healed, then know this, you and all people of Israel. It is by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, but whom God raised from the dead, that this man stands before you healed. Jesus is the stone you builders rejected, which has become a cornerstone. Salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to mankind by which we must be saved. This reading is taken from John 10. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep. So when he sees the wolf coming, he abandons the sheep and runs away. Then the wolf attacks the flock and scatters it. The man runs away because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me. Just as the father knows me and I know the father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that are not of this sheepfold. I must bring them also. They too will listen to my voice, and there shall be one flock and one shepherd. The reason my father loves me is that I lay down my life, only to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have authority to lay it down and authority to take it up again. The command I received from my father. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be always acceptable to you, O God, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Well, if you've managed to, to join the church quiz over the last couple of weeks, you will know the answer to the question that I'm about to ask. The question is this, what is the most common animal in the Bible? Well, you might be tempted to answer it already given our reading, but if you're not that far ahead, you might consider a donkey or a lion. But no, it's a sheep. A sheep is the most commonly named animal in the Bible. And I remember somebody saying to me, I don't know why you go to church. All they ever do is talk about sheep. Well, I'm not sure that's strictly true, but of course, sheep are a feature of the landscape in Jesus's time and culture. 
He uses the experiences of everyday life that people would have been so used to, to help us understand what God is like. And of course, those people who knew and lived with Jesus at the time that he did, would have known what it was like to be a farmer, what it was like to have a shepherd, what it was like to have sheep as part of their everyday lives. And for us, many of us, we're town or suburbia dwellers. We, we don't often see that kind of agriculture around us. And I guess if Jesus was talking to us today about some of these things, he'd use different examples. But nonetheless, the message of what he says is really important and really significant. Because Jesus talks today about being the good shepherd, the good shepherd who cares for his sheep. When others would come for their own self and own gratification, the good shepherd is the one who lays down his life for the sheep, who protects them, guards them uh, and keeps them. And if you were to explore how shepherds looked after their sheep in the ancient world, they don't do it like we do it. They don't get kind of sheepdogs rounding them up from behind and, and shepherds leading from behind. The shepherds in Jesus's time would be the ones who led the way. And interestingly, the sheep would respond to the shepherd's voice. Very well trained animals, of course. And the shepherd would know each of their sheep because he would value them. They were essential for, for life, for well-being, for being able to provide for your family. Knowing your livestock was incredibly important. So we have this lovely phrase in our reading today that the shepherd knows his sheep. In fact, if we were to take a look at the passage, it says this, I am the good shepherd. I know my own sheep and my sheep know me. Just as the father knows me and I know the father, I lay down my life for the sheep. See, rooted in who Jesus is, is this care and protection and compassion for the people who he's talking to. For the people of Israel who first heard his message. The people that he talks to through God's word today. This idea of us being like the sheep might seem a little bit strange, but what it's saying is that God calls us, leads us and protects us. We hear God's voice and God knows who we are. And in many ways, it's a, a very simple message, but it's very profound because this good shepherd we hear today is willing to lay down his life for the sheep. It's not about his own well-being, but it's about those he cares for and protects. And of course, this foreshadows the cross. But significantly in this passage, Jesus knows the sheep. Jesus knows us knows us by name and calls us and it occurred to me that if we who are members of the church are to grow in faith we need to be willing to listen to God's voice to listen to God's word to hear it and to allow it to dwell in our hearts and to be changed and transformed for, by it but we also need to be known by God, to allow God to hear our own concerns, our worries, our thoughts. Not that God doesn't know everything anyway, but that relationship relies on a mutuality of conversation and openness. God never forces his way into our hearts or lives. And so there has to be an openness, not only to know, but to be known. The same is true for our church community. If we're to truly belong to one another as disciples are called to do so, we need to be open to not only knowing one another, but also to be known by each other, to open our hearts and lives to each other. 
so that this community isn't just about what happens for an hour on a Sunday morning or a Sunday evening or even one hour during the week. It's that we truly know each other and belong to each other. From the point of view of being a leader of our church, it is quite hard to get to know everybody. There's so many of us. And yet that's one of the deepest desires that I have, that we should be known, cherished and loved. We should be open to letting ourselves be known as well. And so sometimes people will call me and say, oh, I'm so sorry, perhaps I shouldn't have called, perhaps you're busy. And I think, no, you should have called. How can we be in relationship with one another as God's people if we're not in conversation with each other? If we're not supporting each other during the week, praying for one another, encouraging each other, working together for the sake of the gospel, protecting one another and sharing that remarkable good news that Jesus died and rose again for us. And so today, perhaps even though it might seem a million miles from our own culture, perhaps we can learn from the story of the shepherd and his sheep and know that God loves us and cherishes us, that we are known and that we know, and that we are known to others and that we know them. Amen. And so we declare our faith in the resurrection of Jesus Christ our Lord. Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures. He was buried. He was raised to life on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. And afterwards he appeared to his followers and to all the apostles. This we have received and this we believe. Amen.
Let us pray. Loving Lord Jesus, you are our shepherd. Thank you that each and every one of us is precious to you. Help us to train our ears to listen for your voice amidst the noise of life and to see where and how you are leading us. We pray for the lost sheep of the world, for those of us who wander off to escape from reality. Lord, please turn us around. For leaders of the nations who have forgotten to serve the common good, Lord, please guide them. For those of us who follow popular culture at the expense of knowing you, Lord, please open our eyes. For those of us who are alone and do not realise you are longing to rescue us, Lord, please give us hope. For those of us who are fearful and anxious, Lord, please give us your peace. Good and gracious shepherd who knows suffering and sacrifice beyond our imagining, we thank you that we are here today, enfolded in your loving arms. Amen. And we say together, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And so we continue in prayer as we say, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And so as we come to our notices, just to remind you that the walk is taking place this afternoon at two o'clock. You're very welcome to join us uh, at Risby Lakes, but you do need to let us know in advance just so we can work out numbers. Also, thank you to those who've begun to sign up for the Bible course. As, as I said earlier, we're going to try and make that work so it fits with people's patterns so that they're safe. So if you want want to be involved and are interested let us know let us know your availability how you want to take part whether virtually or in in small groups uh, and we'll try and make that work it's a really lovely course really exciting gives you a bird's eye view of the whole of the biblical narrative also keith's home group on a thursday night they're starting a new course they very open to, to new members. Perhaps if you're not part of a home group, you might like to take part. Do talk to Keith Gilson about it, or talk to me if you would like to call the office. Um, they're looking at the I am sayings of Jesus. There are many different home groups exploring different themes. So if you do want to know more about any of them, again, do speak to me about that. And also there is the praise service this evening in the hall socially distanced, uh, carefully managed, but a real opportunity for us to gather and praise together. We've not had a praise service for, for a year now, and I know many people have missed it deeply. So do come along if you'd like to, seven o'clock in the hall. Just to remind you that you can find all the information on our website, stmarysbeverly.org. And there's a little description on our notice sheet of what Celtic prayer is all about. We've started a new lovely service fortnightly here in St Mary's 
uh, led by John Edmund and, and Steve. Really beautiful, intimate service. But if you want to know more about Celtic spirituality, there is a little article on the notice sheet and you're very welcome to take a look at that. If you want to sign up for the notice sheet, please do uh, email us at samaris.beverly at gmail.com and uh, do get in touch about anything that you're interested in. So Lord God, we know that you are the good shepherd of the sheep. We ask for your blessing on each of us in our homes today. May we know that you walk alongside us as we journey through life. Amen. Mm -hmm.